should know that though by you, from you by now. You have my undivided attention, Emma, I'm ready when you are. All right, so at the beginning of this semester, you might recall that I said that I thought that animals were better than people, and I'm gonna stand by that statement. Vegan diets are going mainstream, and as vegan diets go mainstream, you get more people talking about animal rights. I'm not gonna spend the next eight minutes talking to you about animal rights, because convincing you in that regard would require me to change your fundamental beliefs, and we just don't, frankly, have time for any of that. But also, I'm not gonna talk to you about animal rights because there are way better reasons to change your diet. For example, I suspect that there may be some bacon enthusiasts in the room. There was a study done by Rick Egberg et al. in the Journal of Nutrition, which found that those who ate large amounts of pork actually had higher risks for colorectal cancer. So this is definitely relevant to you if you are a meat eater. I did not go vegan because I think animals are cute. I went vegan for my health and for my budget. Four years ago, I was an avid meat eater with a chronic illness and a history of vegetarianism. I was sick all the time, and I'm not gonna get into the details of my sickness, but basically I would eat, I would feel terrible, and then I was also spending all of this money on food that didn't make me feel good, and so I didn't, I was broke. It was just, oh, it was a mess. But I changed my diet, <laughs> and within months, like six months, I felt better. I wouldn't get sick after meals. Um, I was sleeping better, I had more energy, and I had all this money to do stuff with, like see doctors. <laughs> and the bonus was that I learned that changing my diet actually um, was beneficial to the environment as well as to me. So, the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is the external benefits of veganism, meaning the effect on the environment. And then I'll take it back to the individual level and talk to you about your health and your budget. So let's think big picture for a second. How does a vegan diet benefit society? According to a University of Chicago study, the average American diet, meaning a meat-heavy diet, produces a ton and a half more greenhouse gases than a vegan diet. And this makes sense when you think about all of the energy that goes into making a hamburger. So the building of the facilities to raise and process the meat, the shipping from farms to plants, for processing to stores to your home, and then the cooking, not to mention the methane produced by cows and cow manure, the water used in the production of meat, and the land used to house livestock and to grow food for livestock. Our diets definitely contribute to the problem of climate change, and it's common knowledge at this point that this mode of living is unsustainable. Eventually, we will kind of kill the planet. <laughs> uh, but so going vegan is a concrete way that you can personally help reduce emissions. I know we're like all constantly like hearing about ridiculous ways that you know, buy carbon offsets, do this crazy thing that you eat every day. <laughs> so this is something that you can do every day that can help solve that problem, which I think is a really amazing thing. And you could be scoffing at me right now. You're like, Emma, we're all gonna die. I don't care about the planet. I definitely get it. It's all about you. So let's talk about you. <laughs> Going vegan has health benefits and it will bring your attention to good nutrition. So I mentioned that study by Rick Eckberg on meat and certain cancers, what they actually found was that people who are avid eaters of pork and lamb are at a higher risk for colorectal cancer. It's also been suggested that growth hormones in dairy might be related to higher rates of breast and ovarian cancers. That idea was put forth by Jane Plant several decades ago, and it was summarized by, in a paper by Layla Green et al. where they urged further research into this. No one has really touched it. Um, since Jane Plant kind of came up with the idea, but it is an interesting correlation. Cancer's horrible, and at this point, uh, most people I know have seen a loved one fight it, um, and I think most of us are trying to do what we can to avoid it. Even just reducing the amount of meat that you eat can help you reduce your risk of cancer, but going vegan definitely avoids that risk altogether, the risk associated with meat. Uh, in addition to avoiding certain cancers, vegan diets put you in this really interesting place with regards to nutrition because people ask me all the time if I'm malnourished. 
And that's a myth. Not all vegans are malnourished. Actually, the World Health Organization estimates that one in three people in the world is malnourished. WebMD has a list of common American nutrient deficiencies. These include calcium, potassium, vitamin C, A, and B. And that, that goes for most people. And yes, vegan diets definitely require some extra vigilance. With regards to nutrition, you can see the vegan food pyramid is like just bananas, and it's a lot more than bananas. Um, but I would actually argue that because malnutrition and nutrient deficiencies are so common, we could actually probably all stand to pay more attention to what we're eating and what we're lacking. Keeping track of what you eat is definitely something that you're supposed to do within the first few months of going vegan. When I did it, I realized that I was probably lacking some nutrients to start with, but that my diet was lacking in a lot of things, and I definitely never would have noticed if I hadn't changed my diet. Um, so being aware, more aware of what you're eating um, enables you to eat healthier and kind of fix bad habits. You could be perfectly healthy for all I know and maybe you take a huge multivitamin every day. And if that's the case, good for you. But I'm willing to bet that you are on a budget. It is a common misconception that vegans only eat expensive food. There's a really great book called Critical Food Studies, Doing Nutrition Differently, and it discusses how food and nutrition intersect with race, gender, and class, and it's frankly largely outside the scope of this speech. But in it, one of the authors, Avery Harper, states that the mainstream vegan literature's intended audience is by default white and middle class, and this is true. Um, all the food blogs, the books that you see, all definitely uh, marketed towards white middle class people. And when you go into a Whole Foods, I was in a Whole Foods the other week, and there was a cheese substitute that was $10 for five American cheese style slices, which is ridiculous. Um, and that extends to all of the expensive meat and dairy substitutes. Veggie burgers sometimes go for $7 for two patties. That's insane. My recipe costs you about $5.50, makes 12 burgers, and those burgers freeze for like six months. Uh, to boil that down, that's not the right slide. Let's just, wait, why are we going back? Oh dear, okay. <laughs> to boil that down to something that's more concise and doesn't make you as hungry, the Bureau of Labor Statistics lists the average price for ground beef, any type, as $4 per pound. I'm, I'm using ground beef because a lot of people consider that to be a protein staple. As a vegan, your protein staples are legumes, meaning any bean, which the Bureau of Labor Statistics lists as being on average $1.40 per pound. <laughs> so you can see the difference is pretty huge and that tends to be true across most foods. Um, for me, my grocery bill was reduced by about $20 a month. Um, if you were willing to forego some vegan staples that tend to be really expensive, like avocados, uh, you could probably save even more. <laughs> to recap, meat takes a huge toll on the environment and not consuming it reduces our impact on the planet. Eating vegan reduces your risk for certain cancers, and it will make you more aware of your nutrient deficiencies. Vegan diets can also reduce your food budget. So, as you can see, the best reasons for going vegan have absolutely nothing to do with how cute animals are. A vegan diet should increase human health and sustainability, both for the individual and society. I think this concept is summed up best by a quote from Socrates, Bad men eat to live, live and to eat and drink. Good men eat and drink to live. Don't we all want to live? <laughs>